All right, so what we're working with today is we we're working with parent graphs, and you need to open up another window with Desmos. So go to desmos.com. Um, you want a graph, so you can, um, you want this graphing calculator. We're going to be going back and forth between the two so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so a constant, a constant is just f of x equals 1, where it's just a number. And f of x is just another way to write y. So if I type in y equals 1, there's that function. And we knew what that function was because that's a horizontal line. It's not the right thing. Okay, so I'm going to, there's my dot. So I go to 1, and it's a horizontal line. The domain for this, um, the domain, it goes to the left and right all the way, so it's all reals. The range, it really doesn't go up or down. It's stuck at one spot, and it's stuck at y is 1. All right, linear, you should remember a linear. A linear, this is just y equals mx plus b, and so I don't have a b, but I do have my slope is 1, so it's up 1 over 1. And connect those. Ooh, that's hard. So I do have arrows going to the left and right, so that's the domain, all reals. And I do have arrows kind of pointing up and pointing down, so it's also all reals. Uh, the next ones are ones that you may not remember. You should you might be familiar from middle school, but may, or not middle school, but algebra one, but we'll see. So y equals, let's get the absolute value. There it is, of x. Okay, and so it's a V, and it goes up 1 over 1. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a V that goes up 1 over 1. So absolute value is a V. It always looks like a V. This is the parent. We'll be spending a lot of time on this, this chapter. And then the domain, the arrows go left and right, so it's all real. The range, this is actually only pointing up. So this is going to be y is greater than 0 because that's the y value at the vertex. Okay, so quadratic is another one you might be familiar with, but let's just go graph it just to make sure. And so it's a u. Okay, so it goes up. So it goes up and meets at 1, 1 and two fours. So let's see if we can graph that. So my vertex is here. And I go back. And it goes to one, one, and then two, four. And the reason it does one, one, and two, four is that one squared is one, and two squared is four. So that's where those numbers come from. And so this one's a U. Try not to make it look like a V. The absolute value one's a V. And so domain, it may not look like it, but these arrows are actually slowly going up, and they will make it all the way to the right. So your domain is all reals, just because they'll also make it to the left. The range for this is similar to the absolute value where it's only going up, and it goes up from the vertex. Oh, I just noticed. We never finished out what parent functions are. Let's do that real quick. Parent functions are the most basic function. Um, it's the most basic function. So these are the most basic function where there's no other numbers added. So this is what we know they look like, but then we're going to do transformations for them. Okay. All right, let's go to some more. So square root. So square root, let's look and see what happens with that. Square root of x. And so that goes up and to the right, and it crosses at 1, 1, and 4, 2. And the reason it's 1, 1, and 4, 2 is because the absolute value of 1 is 1, and the absolute value, or I keep saying the wrong thing, absolute, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So that's where those numbers come from. Okay. Uh, the domain on this one, this one's only going one way. 
and it's going to the right, so x is greater than 0. It's always based off this vertex here, or the starting point. And then the domain, it's only going up, so y is greater than 0. Okay. All right. Um, domain and range for cubic. Well, let's look and see what a cubic looks like. So x to the third. So a cubic kind of does this little curve. Let's see if I can draw this thing up. There we go. It curves up, curves flat at the origin, and then goes from there. So here's my origin. So it curves up. And if your graphs aren't really specific on these bottom ones, that's okay. When we get to these chapters where we're talking about these, uh, we will learn how to be specific on them. But for right now, we're really going to be focusing on where these points go. So the domain for this arrows go both ways, so it is all reals, and same with the range. All right, let's see what happens with the reciprocal. So over x and so if you look here it gets close but then it turns away on both of them okay keep going to the wrong thing okay so it gets close to them but it doesn't touch them and so the domain actually you cannot divide by zero so it's everything but zero. So you could say it can't equal zero. And then the range, it's going to be the same thing because it never can get to zero because I can never do one divided by something to get zero. So it can't be zero. When we get to this section, you'll learn that those lines that it can't touch, those are called asymptotes. Okay, and then the last one, we're going to have to change something for here. Let's plug it in and see what it is. I believe can't remember one it has to be two we can't graph one to the x because one to the x will always just be one so what we need to do is we need to change this to make it a two and when we get to exponentials you'll see more what happens but let's see and so let's see where does it cross crosses at 1. So we're still going to cross at 1. And what will happen here, oops, I kind of missed it. This is the point that we'll focus on, okay? Uh, the domain is all reals, but if you recognize this range, it flattens out at 0, so that means it's above 0, and it's actually never going to equal 0, okay? So for this lesson today, the goal is that you're using Desmos to kind of see what happens and understand the different rules. We're going to come back and kind of talk about this, but let's, well, we can actually do this right now. Translation, you can either go to the left or to the right, and you can go up or down. And again, I'm going to highlight the points that we're going to look at. We're going to focus on this point, this point, this point. Here, it's kind of you focus on the curves. You actually won't see many reciprocals in this lesson, so I'm not going to stress it. Here, you'd focus on this point and this point. So those are the points that move. Those are the points that you talk about if it goes left, right, up, or down. Okay, a reflection. There's two types of reflections. You can reflect over the x-axis, which is a vertical flip. And so a vertical flip might go from here to here, okay? A horizontal flip is the other one. Now on a horizontal flip, you will not recognize it here because what happens is this is, let's see, my line of symmetry. And I f if I flip that over, I get the same thing. So you will not recognize a, a horizontal flip on either the absolute value or quadratic. The one you're going to recognize it is a square root because it'll go from going to the right to going to the left. Okay? All right, a shrink. So what happens with a shrink? I, I wish I had my ball here, but if I have a ball, right, if I have something and I shrink it down, what I do is it's like I'm applying pressure to it. 
And so what happens is now it becomes kind of flatter and it becomes an oval because I've pushed it down. So a shrink will go from here to here. It gets flatter. Okay. And then the last one, a stretch, it's kind of the same idea if I had my hula hoop or my ring of some sort. If I have this, but what I do this time now is instead of shrinking it down, I stretch it up. And so what it looks like is it becomes tall and skinnier. So a shrink would go from your absolute value here to a much skinnier one. Okay. All right. So these are the different things that could happen. Um, you're going to be able to use your calculator to look at both to see what always happens. And so we're going to go through some examples and we're going to have to flip back and forth. Okay. All right. So this is an absolute value. And so we're going to graph both and then we're going to describe it. And then we have to do domain and range. Okay. All right. So let's look here. So, oops, y equals absolute value of x, and then y equals absolute value. What was this one? x minus 4. Okay, so you could tell by here the green is our parent, which is right here, and the blue is the new one. So the blue, if I look from vertex to vertex, this went over to the right four. Okay, so this went right four. Oops. And now our domain, our domain is still all reals because it's still going to the left and the right, and our range is still a greater than zero because this point goes up from zero. So all reals and y is greater than or equal to zero. And if we graph this, here's the parent, and then I'm going to graph the new one with a different color. And then it goes over one, two, three, four. And this is the new one. So this is new. Okay? Why don't you try this one? Graph it both the parent and the function in the calculator. The parent's just going to be x squared. Let's graph that one and see what you get. And when you think you got it, press play. Okay, let's see. Oops. Ah! I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Uh, and then it's plus one. Okay, so the black one's my parent, the red one's my new one. So first of all, it flipped it upside down, but then if you notice, the vertex went from zero, zero, up to zero, one. Okay, so that's what we're going to describe. It went up one, and it was a vertical flip. Okay, so this is, this was what the original one is. And then the new one, I'm going to do in red. So here's one, and it was a vertical flip. Okay, and then the last thing we do is we have to figure out the domain and range of our new one. So our domain of our new one, again, even though it looks like it doesn't go left and right, it does. It's just pretty slow. So the domain is all reals. And this time, our new one is going down. So it's not going to be greater than, it's going to be less than. And it is less than positive 1 because that's the vertex here. Okay, let's try two more. We're running out of time, but we're going to keep going. It's okay if this one's over 15 because we're having to go back and forth between a couple of things. And so what were we doing? The square root of x and 1 half square root of x. The root of x, okay, y equals one half square root of x. Okay, so it this looks like it was a shrink because it got it flatter. Okay, and so 
so it was a shrink because it got it flatter so the original one was here and I'm going to keep doing the new one in red and the new one was here okay and so our domain again this only goes to the right so oops, it's not all reals it's x is greater than or equal to zero and this one only goes up so y is greater than or equal to zero all right we have one last one let's look at this cubic function so y equals x to the third and then it was y equals three plus one to the third okay so there's a couple things you should recognize right away the vertex went from zero zero to one negative one zero so I know it went to the left one so this went to the left one but this number did something also that's where the one comes in there was a number one now I gotta figure out what that number did and if you notice it's kind of squeezed closer together and it's steeper so since this black one is steeper than this like lavender one then that means it was a stretch so I went from here let's get red again for the new parent I went to the left one and this one's kind of steeper it's not as flat and so the domain on that one again even though it doesn't look like it's going to the left it's going to the left and right so it's all reals and the range is pretty easy to see that it's also all reals okay so know which parent graph to to look at and then know to focus on those yellow points we highlighted here and you're allowed to use your calculator for all these or your desmos because it makes it easier to see all right and that's it